Hey lady, it's your girl here, Dr. Sharonda Simone. And yes, tonight's episode looks a little different. It will be a little different, but we're going to push through it because I know that it's going to bless you, all right? So no, we are not in the usual studio location. I'm actually in uh, Atlanta. I'm at a medical conference. So every year we have to have a certain number of credit hours, like medical education hours. Uh, for us to maintain our license as doctors. So I'm at a conference getting my medical education so I can take care of my patients to the best of my ability. And I had planned on still doing our usual Thursday live, okay? But because the conference ends uh, late, then I won't be able to do that. And I didn't want for us to miss tonight's chat because it's going to be helpful trust me um that being said yes i'm in a hotel room um it's not my hotel room but the um my hotel room is like a different floor but anyway this one was free and available right now and i figured that i would come and chat with you just to share something that that i believe so many women need to hear so many strong women like yourself you need to hear this all right so make sure that you smash the like button before we go any further spam the comment section and share this episode with a friend now, usually, like I said, we go live, but I still want to hear from you. I still want for you to chat it up in the comments because there are some, some tips that you can also share with the Grown Lady Chat community. So I want to hear them, okay? But tonight, I'm going to talk about strong women who feel weak at times. Yeah, I know. I know you've been there. Maybe you're in that season right now. Maybe you are in that moment where you know you're a strong woman. You're the woman that everybody leans on. You're the woman that everybody goes to. You are the go-to person in your circle. You are the fix-it lady. You are the resource finder in your circle. But lady, you feel weak. You feel depleted. You feel drained and frustrated. And you don't know who is going to help you. you no one is coming to your rescue. I want to talk to you tonight. I want to talk to the strong woman who feels weak, who feels hopeless. We've all been there, but it's a feeling and feelings pass. And here are some ways that I like to address those feelings as a Christ follower, as a strong Christian woman who has a wonderful husband, who has wonderful children, who has a good job. I mean, you're not in some major turmoil, or maybe you are. But I'm talking to any strong woman in whatever phase of life. If you are dealing with that moment, that season, that feeling of frustration and weakness and lack, this conversation is for you, okay? But what I'm going to share with you is not a finite list, okay? It's just things that I like to do. Um, and things that you can do as well. But I want to hear from you, okay? So make sure that you meet in the comment section. If it's your first time tuning in, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Please check out the other episodes. You'll find that uh, it's not as hectic and chaotic, all right? We have about 10 seasons now already of Grown Lady Chat, and we're celebrating our 100th episode on May 28th at 7 p.m., which is a Tuesday. It will be a live episode on a Tuesday on account of the holiday. So make sure that you're tuned in, okay? Make sure that you're locked in, subscribed with your bell notifications, and make sure you RSVP to the 100th episode celebration because when you do that, that is the only way you'll be entered into the giveaway prizes for that episode, all right? You're going to want to tune in. Also, you want to tune in because uh, we're going to have a good chat, good reflection, and live performances. It's going to be an online party. Trust me, RSVP and show up. You don't want to miss it. My prayer and my hope is that we will have over 100 ladies on this uh, episode. So that being said, if you've RSVP'd, thank you. And now share the episode with somebody else. Share the, the 100 celebration episode link with somebody else and tell them that they need to RSVP so they can be entered for door prizes and so they can get reminders and all that good stuff. Okay? All right. I think I'm, I'm finished with all of my uh, PSA. I think I have. Oh, my arm is so tired. I forgot my tripod. Whew, it's a whole thing, ladies. It's a whole thing. Um, but getting into tonight's chat, all right? Tonight's chat, again, like I said, is for strong women. And I'm going to share with you a few things that I like to do um, when I'm feeling weak. The first thing that I do when I'm feeling weak, and I want for you to try it out, is I want for you to reach out to another strong woman. You might be the strong woman in your circle, the person who everybody comes to, the fixer, the problem solver, the resource finder. 
you might be that person in your circle. But you have another woman, she just came to mind, and she is the strong woman for you. You, you go to her, you look up to her, you respect her, you lean on her, and she's happy about it. As strong women, we're okay with that. We, we, we like for people to take advantage of the fact that God gave us that strength, that, that breath to help and to hold up and to support. So it's not as though we're taxed in a negative way, as in we don't want to do it, but we're taxed because we're tired. We're taxed because we're frustrated. We're taxed because we need someone to look in on us. So lady, look in on your strong woman. Maybe no one has done that recently. Or check this out. Maybe someone has reached out to the strong woman. But as most strong women do, she said, I'm fine. And no one ever followed up. We just took her at her word. But as a strong woman, you already know that it's not always easy for us as strong women to ask for help and to admit when we need help. So we might have to probe a little deeper. You might have to say, okay, you're good praise God, but is there something I can pray for you? Is there something I can pray with you about? Is there something I can do for you? I've had women ask me that after I've given them the, I'm good, everything is fine, knowing full well that I could use some help, I could use a, a helping hand. But when they probe a little deeper, they ask, is there a gap that I can fill? Is there a prayer request that I can pray with you, you know, about? It, it forces me to truly be vulnerable and transparent and to let my guard down as a strong woman. So ask, ask the strong woman in your circle, are you okay? If she says, yes, everything is fine, go a little deeper. Say, is there something I can pray with you about? Is there a gap, a need where I can, I can stand with you? You know, is there a topic you want to discuss? ask them because chances are nobody is doing that so the first thing lady check on the strong woman in your life check on her okay because she needs to be checked on she's tired too strong women we get tired too right we feel weak too right christian strong women we still we still need that support the next thing that i like to do and that we should do is we have to build up ourselves in the Lord as in yes it is human nature for us to want the support and encouragement the affirmation the confirmation the reassurance the security of others I think that's human nature I think God made us that way so that we can live in community at the same time often you lady will have to be your own support you lady will have to through God not through yourself not just manifestation and, and affirmations and you know worldly things but truly saying, Lord, I am coming to you to build me up and you have to be the one to do it. As in, you have to say, Sharonda, you're doing a good job. Sharonda, you're a winner. Sharonda, you can make it. That's what I say to myself. Build up myself in the Lord. I speak the word of God back to him. Sharonda, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Sharonda, you are beautiful. Sharonda, you are strong. Sharonda, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Or I look in the mirror and I'll say, I, Sharonda, can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. By saying those words, planting those seeds, because we've talked about it before, that our words are seed, they are power. You are planting the seed in your life, even in the midst of that weak season, even in the midst of that, of that broken season, that frustration, that pain, that hurt, that regret, whatever you're feeling right now as a strong woman, even in that season, you need to be planting seeds of right thinking, of positivity, of God's word and the God given truth of your life. You have to plant those seeds. So, you know, the Bible tells us we have to build up our, our faith, build ourselves up, encourage yourself in the Lord. Do that. Even if you don't feel it in the moment, remember feelings are fleeting and they're often not right. They're often not true. Feelings are fleeting and often not true. So you have to say, I know I don't feel like it, but I know the Bible tells me I am fearfully and wonderfully made, right? The next thing, ladies, if you're enjoying tonight's episode, albeit chaotic and uh, out of sorts, please be sure to drop in the comments and let me know. Also smash the like button, okay? The next thing that I like to do is I like to remind myself that I'm doing a good job. Is everything perfect? No. Are all cylinders firing? No. Is my life balanced? No. 
Is that a realistic expectation? It is not. We've talked about this. Balance is not realistic. It's not a good goal to have. We've talked about this. But everything is not perfect. It is not. But I'm doing a good job. I am. Why? Because I'm a child of God. I'm doing my very best. Uh, when I, I fall short, I repent. I ask for help. You showed up this morning. You got up this morning. You tended to your children. You, you went to work. You, you took care of your home, your husband. You took care of friends, family, right? You still showed up today. Lady, if no one has told you recently, you are doing a good job. Just the other day, I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine who is also a strong woman. She is also a member of Grown Lady Chat community. And she just came in. It was unrelated. She came in to, you know, and was talking with me. And she said, it must have been Holy Spirit because we hadn't had a chat, you know, um, until that time, like all day. Okay. I hadn't seen her all day. And she came in and the first few words out of her mouth were, you're doing a good job. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I needed to hear that because in that moment, I was feeling weak. I was feeling broken. I was feeling less than. I was feeling insecure. And I'm a strong woman in Christ. And yet, I was still feeling that way. But her words in that moment, just saying, you're doing a good job. I see you. You're thriving. It builds me up. Now, remember, you're not always going to wait for someone else to do that. We have the same capability to speak to ourselves. Just as... We, we hear it from someone else, we can speak to ourselves and confirm and affirm through the words of God, we can speak to ourselves. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. What does the Bible say about you? Recite that, repeat it to yourself. I have to do this often, so you have to do it too, okay? As a strong woman, trust me, it works, all right? It works. You're doing a good job, don't forget that. Keep up the good work. Show up. It doesn't always feel good. It do, it's not always we, that we want to do it. But we know that the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. To whom much is given, much is required. And God gave you much. And so he requires much from you. But let's not gloss over the fact that God gave you much. He gave you strength. He gave you the role of strong woman in your circle. He gave you the role of mother. He gave you the role of wife. He gave you the role of auntie. He gave you the role in your job. He gave you the promotion. God gave you the much. And so let's show up with the much that is required because God gave it to us already. Okay. God blessed us with much. And so he requires us to use the much he gave us to serve his people, to do good in the world. And you can use that also for yourself. Build yourself up. Remind yourself, lady, that God made you fearfully and wonderfully, that you are a force to be reckoned with because of your God. The Bible says in Daniel, those who know their God will be strong and do extraordinary things and do exploits. Those who know their God will be strong and do exploits, extraordinary things. That is who you are in the Lord. I'm talking to you just as much as I'm talking to myself. Don't forget that. When you, strong woman, are feeling weak, when you, strong woman, are feeling broken down and downtrodden and, and regretting, remember that you know your God. Know him intimately. Not just a passerby, not an acquaintance. Those who know their God in a deep way will be strong and do extraordinary things. Ladies, mm, I don't know. I, I needed this. I needed this. Okay. You know that whenever I come in and chat with you, I'm talking from experience. Unless I have somebody else on who is speaking to something that I don't know about, I'm always going to share with you from my own experience. All right. So I'm talking to you just as much as I'm talking to Sharonda. Okay. So we're going to remind ourselves that we're doing a great job. You are. You're doing a great job. And then, you know, we have to adjust our deadlines and expectations. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, another strong woman, and she was saying, hey, you have all of these self-imposed deadlines. And, and we do that because we're go-getters, right? We have things that we want to accomplish and we have plans that we want to accomplish. And so we have set these deadlines and we have set these expectations, good things, noble things, uplifting things, righteous things, godly things, right? Promotional things. But these deadlines sometimes are self-imposed and we can move the goalpost 
because it's it, it we have the 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 skills to do that we have the opportunity to do that just because you have a deadline and just because you, because you have an expectation doesn't mean that it cannot be moved life is flexible life is ever changing ever shifting we as strong women have to be fluid and flexible as well. Does that mean that we abandon discipline? No, lady. Mm -mm. We're not abandoning discipline. We're not saying that, okay, because it didn't work, we're going to just, you know, be lazy and sit on our, our tush. No, but we are going to be realistic. We're going to use wisdom, right? And so we're going to move that goalpost because it is the wisest thing to do sometimes. Other times, the best thing to do is to push through grit and bear it. Other times, it is to use wisdom. Listen to your body. Listen to your to your to your yourself. Listen to God. And sometimes God will say, you know what? You need to sit down. You're tired. Like Elisha. Elisha was, was tired and hungry. And when he was tired and hungry, he forgot all the, the wonderful miracles. He forgot all the strength and power he had in the Lord. He said he, he, he became this feeble, broken down. Oh, Lord, it's just me. No one's here to help me. And you know what? What did the Lord do? He sent the angel to tell him to take a nap and get something to eat. Read it. Ladies, sometimes... Your weakness is because you're actually sleepy and hungry. There are times when my kids come to me and I, I know my children well, and I can see that they're acting out of sorts. And it could go one of two ways. They could get punished or I could say, you're tired, go take a nap. And when Holy Spirit shows me that it's not that there is truly something wrong, it's that they're tired and you take a nap, I tell them, there's nothing wrong with you, honey. You're just tired. You're hungry. Go eat and then take a nap. Lady, sometimes you just need to uh, take a nap. You just need to move your expectations. You need to move your deadlines. These are self-imposed deadlines that you can move. And it's not going to be detrimental. It's not going to be the end of the world. But yes, you're driven. Yes, you're a strong woman. Yes, you have your, your deadlines and your spreadsheets and your expectations and your timetables and your planners set out. I know you do because I do too. But I have to remind myself. As a strong woman, when I'm feeling weak, when I'm feeling as though I'm, I'm, I'm just missing all the marks, is it because maybe I need to move the mark? Not become lazy, not lack discipline, but maybe I need to move the mark because we cannot do everything all at once. You're strong, but you're not superhuman. God can do all things at once. But we cannot do all things at once. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It didn't say I can do all things all the time, all at once through Christ. Okay? All right? Yeah, uh-huh. I know. That that hit somebody because as I was saying it, 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 it hit me again. <laughs> okay? We can't do all things all the time through Christ. It didn't say that. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes we have to prioritize, right? We have to prioritize. The next thing I like to do is remind myself of the big picture. When I'm feeling weak, as a strong woman, I tend to get very preoccupied with what's in front of me and everything is big, everything is important, everything needs attention, everything needs to be perfect. But as a reformed perfectionist, I submit to you that not everything is important. Not everything needs to be perfect. You could delegate, give some things up. And I know that as strong women, we like to have our hands on everything because we could do it best. <laughs> no, sometimes we need to do it like my daughter told my son. <laughs> my daughter told one of her brothers, do your best and forget about the rest. Let me tell you something. I have heard many motivational speeches and as a motivational, inspirational speaker, I have given many motivational and inspirational speeches. But in that moment, when my daughter told my son that, and I heard, I heard of it, 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 it moved me. I said, oh, if this four-year-old can understand that we can do our best and forget about the rest, how, how, how come we as adults seem as though we have to hold on to everything? Mm -mm. Lady, look, do your best and forget about the rest. Um, I have some some concerns about my my uh my video today about how i look but i'm i'm, I'm, I'm going to push through <laughs> i'm going to push through mm, yeah i i have some concerns i don't quite like how things look but we're going to do what we need to do we're going to do what we came here to do okay not everything's a fashion show sharonda not everything most things my life to me is a fashion show but 
right now we're not focused on that okay let me keep going because i need to hurry up and finish okay so yeah look at the big picture not everything is uh, has the same level of importance we have to prioritize we have to prioritize so when you think about eternity compared to what's going to happen or you know the impact that it will have a year from now a month from now a week from now a minute from now a day from now we have to prioritize so whatever you're worrying about whatever you're stressing about whatever is plaguing you in this moment is it going to impact your eternity is it going to have a detrimental impact to where you spend the rest of your life if the answer is yes then you need to stay focused but if it's not lady you can walk away sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself as a strong woman is to walk away but we're not walking away as in we're defeated we're walking away because sometimes it's the wise thing to do sometimes it's the smart thing to do okay i keep on looking at my hair because it is an old wash and go that needs to go <laughs> i need i need to redo it okay look at the big picture and realize that not everything is essential we've talked about this before not everything deserves all of your attention or a large portion of your attention some things we just have to walk away from we have to let go we have to realize when we need to stick it out when we need to walk away when we need to postpone when when we need to redirect when we need to delegate big picture is it going to impact my eternity the next question is what's the impact going to be if not for my eternity is it going to be next year next month and if the impact that is going to be felt if it's not going to be detrimental again why am i worrying about it first of all we should not be worrying we should be casting our cares but why am i allowing it to to be an obsession why am i allowing myself to be robbed of moments of living life because i'm so worried and bogged down by something that has no eternal consequence is it important yes but is it eternally important most things aren't does that mean that we don't care no it just means that we appropriate the correct level of care and not worry look at the big picture okay ladies is this helpful as chaotic as it is is this helpful if so drop in the comments let me know and don't forget to smash the like button okay and the next thing that you're going to do is talk to someone about it remember when satan was uh, deceiving Eve what did he do did he wait until Eve was with Adam no he approached Eve when Eve was by herself why because Satan likes to work in isolation he likes to talk to us when we are solo dolo because where two or more are gathered in the name of the Lord that's where he is so if you and your godly good friend are chatting Satan is less likely to try and attack you because two or more are gathered in the name of the Lord. He's there. But when you're by yourself, you're with your thoughts and Satan is attacking your mind, bombarding your thoughts, hurting your emotions, sending lies down the pipeline. You are more likely to believe the lies and fall prey to Satan's evil plan when you're by yourself. Talk to somebody. Lady, you're strong. I get it. I know. I understand. It's hard sometimes for us to admit vulnerability. It's hard for us sometimes to admit transparently that we are not uh, perfect, <laughs> that we're not in a place of equal balance and, and peace. It's hard for us to admit that as strong women because everybody looks to us when they're not feeling strong, when they're feeling weak, when they're in need. So for us to admit, hey, I don't have it all together all the time. Somebody help me. It's not always easy to do, but I'm telling you, it is important for us to do it. Again, I'm talking to you and I'm talking to myself. It's important. When I am feeling weak and vulnerable, when I am feeling uh, as though I cannot continue on, I talk with somebody. I grab my husband. I grab my best friend. I grab my mother. If you need professional help, guidance counseling therapy with a christian you know therapist do that whatever you need to do because chances are uh, you're talking to somebody who's dealt with it before or they they've been there that's why having a community like grown lady chat is so important because i see you ladies in the comments forming your own little communities inside of the big grown lady chat because you're like, oh, I can relate to that, Jera. I can relate to that, Tracy. Oh, I can relate to that, Marquita. You know, everybody, I, I see you forming your own groups within Grown Lady Chat. And I love to see it because that is what I, I created that for. That is what is on my heart for us to be a community of women who love the Lord and who do life together. And we enjoy doing life beautifully in Christ. 
that is my plan that is my goal that is that is my god-given destiny so it's not even my plan it's just me carrying out god's plan okay and so I want you to talk to somebody. Don't stay in isolation because that's what Satan wants. He wants to attack you because you are more vulnerable when you're by yourself. Now, be wise. Don't spread your business, you know, to people who, who are going to be reckless with it. So don't do that. But use wisdom and talk with somebody. And I have found sometimes that it's easier to talk to someone who has known me for a shorter amount of time versus talking to somebody who has known me all my life or, or who has known me for decades and decades about certain things. It's, it's easier because they don't come in with the, oh, you remember when you had this problem back in 2012 and here's what you did. Remember when you failed at this? No, they don't have all that, that context. All they know is me now and moving forward. So they can come with a fresh set of eyes. They can come with no preconceived notions and they can give me fresh input, fresh advice. So you might not always want to lean on the people who have known you the longest because they've known you the longest. Maybe they, they haven't been able to appreciate your grow up, your glow up, your change, your move. Remember in the Bible, it said that Jesus dealt with people in his own tone, looking at him like, oh, you're just Jesus. You're Joseph's son, the carpenter's son. Oh, mm -hmm, yeah, whatever. Keep it moving. Jesus, the savior of the world, didn't get the respect in his own tone because they were like, we remember you when you were snout nose running around, you know, scraping your knee and being a child. Your longest friendships, your longest relationships, they might not always be the one to help you when you, the strong woman, are in a weak season. Because they probably only remember you as a snot nosed little bratty kid growing up. They only know you a certain way. They haven't, they can't appreciate who you've grown up to be. They can't appreciate the strong woman you are because they still have you in a, 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 a mental picture of who you were before the grow up, the glow up, okay? So talk to somebody. And again, it might not always be the person you've known the longest. And if you need professional help, do that as well, okay? But I would recommend as a Christ follower that you find somebody who is also Christ-minded, all right? Because we want for whatever advice to be Bible-based, okay? So you use wisdom. All right, the last thing, but not really the last, just the last thing on my list is, <laughs> it's a fun one. And I believe that we can all do this uh, and we should do this. Everything I'm recommending, obviously, I think we should do. But, you know, the Bible tells us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So whether you can sing or not, lady, if you want to immediately lift your mood, sing, hum, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, if you really have vocal pipes, lady, get into that make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And sometimes it's going to take a sacrifice of praise. The Bible tells us to give a sacrifice of praise, which means we don't always want to do it. <gasps> Shock. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes I don't feel like praising. I love the Lord. I'll never stop loving the Lord, but I don't feel like praising because my heart is heavy. I'm feeling weak. I'm feeling, you know, uh, empty. Again, it's a feeling. Feelings are fleeting and often lies, but that's how I'm feeling. So what do I do? I say, mm -mm. the Bible says, give the sacrifice of praise. And so I'm going to just make a joyful noise. It might start out with a mm -hmm, whatever melody comes to mind. And then it might weave into actually singing, you know, some upbeat Christian music. Or maybe it's like a, a, a song like Make It Happen by Mariah Carey. I shared that with you ladies on another episode. That, that song, I mean, anytime I need a, a, a good pick me up, a good lift, I start singing, make it happen. You know that song and it just immediately shifts my my mood Satan Originally created uh, by God as Lucifer His body was created as an instrument So he was the angel of music. Not only did he provide musical uh, entertainment and, and glory to God really, but his body was created as an instrument and so music has the capability to transform things because it's so powerful. And that's why Satan uses music in such a negative way to, to cause trouble, to cause moral decay because he understands the impact of music. God made his body a musical instrument before the fall, right? So we can use music, a joyful noise unto the Lord to shift our emotions, to shift our mindset, to shift how we are perceiving things. 
If you want to lift your mood, lady, get that favorite song of yours that really gets you going, that gets you hype. I have, I have my, my gospel playlist. You know, I have my contemporary music playlist. I have my, my reggae playlist, right? Um, I have my Mariah Carey playlist. And when I get those songs going, boom. I mean, sometimes I'll be in the middle of the day seeing patients and I'm just like, oh, Lord, is it quitting time yet? I love my patients. I love what I do. But sometimes I get tired and I'm like, okay, and I, I know that I'm, you know, my mind's still working. I'm still going to take care of my patients no matter what, but I don't feel like I'm there. Sharonda's not there. And I, I want to deliver for my patients all the time, you know, from the bedside manner to the medical treatment. So there are times when I'm like, oh, I can feel myself just the strong woman is feeling weak. What do I do? Turn on some music. And in between patients, it first starts off like a begrudging, mm, I'm, I'm just going through the motions. And then after a while, it, it picks up. And now it, it's in there. And I can feel my, my, my mood being lifted. And, you know, so it's so beautiful when we tap into something as simple as singing and humming. When you, a strong woman, are feeling weak, you can, in the moment, transform things with singing, humming, and, and doing the other things I talked about tonight. So I want to hear in the comment section because I know that there are some things that you do that really work for you as a strong woman when you're feeling weak. Lady, I want to hear from you. Let me know, drop in the comments, all right? Um, again, I know that tonight is not the usual setup. Thank you so much for being patient. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if it's your first time, again, check out the other seasons, okay? We have like 10 seasons, so you'll find out it's not as, as haphazard and chaotic, and it's really good when we can have the live feedback, all right? So tune in to another episode, but again, I did not want for tonight to pass without us having this chat, so I'm sharing it this way, and I look forward to reading your comments, and I will personally respond to everybody's comments as well. All right, so again, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget... Um, every Monday and Thursday, new episodes at 7 p.m., Grown Lady Chat. Um, until next time, remember, I am Dr. Sharonda Simone, and I will either see you at the top or from the top. You decide. Bye.